Okay, so this is another VFX shot done in Houdini. It's by a channel called 70 on Vimeo. We're going to try it in uh, Blender. So this is my results. This is fully procedural, so you can see the path uh, our destruction is taking. I can uh, come in here, look for the curve. I'm not using Dimitri nodes. This is just a physics system. It's quite easy to set up, though I had to try like 10 ways to make it and failed. Uh, this is the only way that I found that worked efficiently without being slow and fully procedural. Uh, all the other ways we had issues. I have this curve. Now I can just change the curve. This should also, the destruction should also update as well, following the path. All physics best, you can see some rocks in there. And we also have a simple smoke simulation. Uh, this is actually not a smoke simulation, it's a particle system. I'm going to show you how to set that all up. If you want to check the project files, all links are going to be in the description. You can get it on my Gamron page and my Patreon page. First thing we're going to do is add some blocks. So I'm going to keep this simple, just make a nice segment block, apply the scale and just make a copy. Okay, so something like that. And now I'm going to make another copy, just like that, shift D and we have that. Go to object, rigid body, active. If I hit play, they all fall down, but I don't want them to fall down immediately. So I'm just going to select everything, go to the physics, dynamics, deactivate and deactivate at start. Make sure you're holding down alt when selecting these so that they can be applied to all the selected objects. Now, if I play, nothing happens, but I want to have a base, a ground base for these to fall on too. So I'll go under rigid body again, type passive. Hit play, nothing happens because we have frozen the rigid body at the start of the animation. Let me move this a bit up. Okay, something like that. And that to make the simulation faster, since these are simple cubes, I'm just going to change the shape from convex to box. So I'm going to draw a curve. Let me just delete this and draw this. Uh, let's do a curve that goes like that. Perfect. I'm going to get uh, any object, maybe a Suzanne head, just like this. Maybe scale it down and Actually, I want to have these blocks in a collection, so I'll select those and uh, yeah, I want these to be in a collection. I'm going to call it M1. Now I can hide that for now and uh, come here, use cursor to selection or into 3D cursor so that I can move this there. And if you select the Suzanne head and the path, you can use Ctrl P to follow path. If I hit play now, the curve follows the path. Now, if I go back here, uh, bring back M1, give this a rigid body type active, hit play. You see, we run into issues. Actually, this has to be passive, animated. It doesn't really work and doesn't give us what we want. So what I'm going to do is instead of having this here, I'm just going to push it down a bit like that. If I hit play, actually it should be even lower. Let me apply the scale for this. Hit play, nothing happens. It's under this. So what I'm going to do is uh, give this a keyframe. I'm going to give it a bounce effect so that it pops up like this. Actually, let me just do it so uh, it would be much easier to understand after I done, I've done it. So I've added a keyframe. Now I can go Control tab into curves editor. Look for the Z component. Actually, it's the only component I need. I can even delete the other, uh, other stuff. Go to the modifiers and add a noise modifier. Uh, this will just give this a bouncy effect and I can see what we're doing now. I'm going to increase the strength, uh, the strength and the frequency, and you can see what we are having. The issue is when these are being pushed away, the blocks on the side are moving as well. We don't want that. So you, we can see the path our curve is taking. So what I'm going to do is just use a circle select tool and just select the outer blocks, just leaving a little bit of room for, for our path, uh, do something like that. And I'm going to freeze these ones here by changing their rigid body type to passive. Now, if I hit play, you see what we are getting. Uh, it seems our force is too much. So we need to reduce it a bit. I, I think we, we can start by reducing the strength, but I don't want this to pop out too much. So what I'm going to do is add another modifier, the limits modifier to limit how far this noise goes. So the peak of this noise is, uh, it pushes this object up to this level, but I only want it to pop out 
just a bit. So what I'm going to do is use the limits and I'm going to limit the maximum height so I can push that and you can see how it's streaming off uh, parts of the noise. So I want the maximum to be just a little bit there. Another thing I could do is go to the curve and reduce how fast this is following the curve by changing the path animation, uh, the end frame to something like 200. So that is much slower. And to make the physics run even faster, I'm going to change out this shape to a less complicated collision shape. Let's use a sphere for the collision. You can also just move the entire Z channel up by just moving this up a bit. So right now things are procedural. The only thing that is non procedure is uh, the fact that we have to freeze some of the particles. If you want, you can unfreeze them, give them a type passive uh, so that they are free to move around. Only freeze the, the boundary bricks, object, rigid body, passive. Yeah, we still have the same behavior. Okay, so now I can easily change the path. Things should update accordingly. Now you can add some materials. I'm going to use my text folder add-on uh, to add some materials. Let me go to the shader here uh, to look for some concrete PBR materials. Concrete. Of course, we are not done yet. You can see in the original project, we have more stuff. We have particles and we have some smoke. So let's do that quickly. So first thing, let me go to my asset library and uh, look for a rock, grab something like this, import that in. Uh, this is going to be our particle. I'm going to remove some of the resolution by using a decimate modifier. And uh, I can come back to the Suzanne head. Let me add a plane above uh, this head and uh, parent it to the, to the Suzanne head, just like that. And make sure it's uh, somewhere above, yeah, something like this and give it a subdivision surface. For now, let me disable the rigid body system. So we have that. Now I can add in a particle system, a new particle system. Uh, make these shoot out at a velocity, a high velocity. I want the gravity to be quite low. Recalculate normals so that these the normals are pointing up. Okay, uh, let me bring back the gravity and this should be maybe four. Yeah, something like that. Render should be object and the object should be our rock. Randomize the scale, randomize the rotation, uh, set it to dynamic, give it an angular velocity as well. And we have something like that. And uh, this ground here, we can give this a collision option and make it sticky so that any particles uh, that falls on it uh, is sticks onto the surface and maybe just slides a bit. Uh, we can also increase the damping and the friction so that the particles don't go too far. Uh, their life should be at the length of the timeline. So 250, yeah, something like that. Uh, I'm going to call this particle system one and uh, make a copy of it. it. Should be one here, so this should be. Uh, make sure this is a different copy, and uh, change the seed. And uh, this can have more particles, like two thousand. The velocity can also be maybe a little bit higher, but they're going to be even smaller. So point one. Yeah. So now, if we bring back the physics, the rigid body. Actually, let me just bake that or catch that. Yeah, so now you can see what we have. Okay, I want these rocks to have the materials to look kind of similar to, so I'm just going to use a uh, mix and just change this to color. If you have dynamic on uh, this, you will see the particles continue rotating. So I'm just going to remove that. And uh, so that they, they don't continue rotating. Yeah, so we have that. Then the last thing we can add is this smoke effect, uh, that smoke effect there. Uh, again, to do that, we can come back here, create a new particle system, call it smoke. Okay, let's see play. You can see, yeah. Uh, first thing I want to do is uh, make sure that this has no gravity, uh, that these particles just go up. And uh, the particles are going to be plain like this. And uh, this plane is just going to be uh, a smoke effect. So I'm going to go to text. I'm going to add a texture, image texture. Uh, I have a texture, a smoke texture I have. So if you look at that, uh, that's it. I'm just going to use a uh, translucence, then a transparency, blend these two. 
and this alpha is going to be it. It's going to be our, our blender. We need to make sure that this is set to alpha alpha blend and uh, the shadow should be alpha hashed. Uh, we need to switch these two and we have a small. I need these to always face the camera otherwise it would sometimes it would disappear depending on the angle and uh, also I need back face to be. To make it face the camera I just have to add track to constraint and uh, the target is going to be our camera and uh, you want this to be at the center or somewhere close to the camera I can even scale it down uh, you can just have this in a backup collection BK so that you can hide that so that it's not rendered okay now okay, let me bring it back let's go back to our particles and under render we want object and uh, this is our object so if we play back uh, we should scale this up and uh, the rotation should be object rotation so that the always face the camera as well and you can already see we have uh, some smoke effect now they are just popping out and popping into existence we don't want that let's also randomize the scale a bit uh, for the popping out of existence issue we can fix that by using a blend texture so I'll use a blend texture go to the influence make sure this is set to size and uh, the mapping should be set to particles and you want to set the color ramp so the particles start uh, scale of zero and go to their full size and uh, when they die I want them to go back to zero to scale down slowly and so that they can fade out so if I hit play you can see they all just do that we need to set up some lighting I'm going to use my quick functions add-on to bring in a uh, a sun just like that this a bit and uh, yeah so we have that um we change the lighting a bit bring this down go to the sky and uh, bring this strength to something low so that we can see the smoke we see our smoke uh, but remember to see it correctly you have to see it from the camera view uh, we want the smoke to be the same color as the dust or other things now since so i'm just going to come here under translucence and just make sure that i match it May make it a bit darker just like that now to make this pop out you can add some lights so you can see how now the smoke has a uh, detail so you can add some lights like that uh, I think it's going up too fast so I'm going to reduce its velocity to 0.5 yeah something like that and maybe make it a bit dark as well so yeah you have to do a lot of tweaking so we can add an extra light somewhere here to also light our smoke there so yeah and that's it again this is completely procedure everything is procedure I uh, can go back to the curve I can just split everything and draw the curve again so uh, let me just do a circle this time uh, but again uh, you have to if you baked your rigid body you have to delete the bake and yeah and now you can see everything it follows the curve okay so that's it if you want to get the project file they're going to be in on my patreon page and my gumroad page and my youtube membership page thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video